this is Mike Trout here, and I'm going to basically do a uh, a talk through as the um, unit, basically the uh, producer, on-site producer of the documentary. I handled the logistics, the the shooting locations. I did all of the work associated with the Smithsonian Channel show here, Kill Hornets from Hell. And they wanted to create kind of like a Game of Thrones feel, right? Um, and I'm going to give you kind of the background on how this was all filmed and everything else, right? The Bamboo Giants. Um, I'm My name is Mike Trout, and I've been living in Japan for 15 years. I live in actually in Fukui, but the filming of, of this show was in Shikoku, Japan, which is an island south of Kobe right large island it's one of the most beautiful islands that you can um you know imagine and uh there is where i met uh tokonaga suzume and tokonaga suzume um is one of the greatest hornet hunters he has done literally thousands of tv shows and he's kind of like a an edison of um hornet hunting he creates all these contraptions and stuff and uh, this was filmed back in uh, 2000 and um, uh, I guess around, I don't know, 16, 2000, late 2016. Um, and it aired in 2018. I can't remember if, uh, if the dates are right on this. So this was actually just around the road. And we found, and I spotted this. I was just driving down. I noticed that these yellow jackets were drinking out of this natural spring. So we were able to uh, come down now, um, and capture this. And it's kind of rare to catch hornets actually drinking from water. Um, this is my friend's uh, temple. This is actually in um, um, Ono. Uh, and uh, you'll notice that uh, there is a yellow jacket kind of mounted under that. What you don't see is actually, I placed this yellow jacket um, um, here. It was actually grown by my teacher. Now, if you look very carefully at the top of the darkness right behind him, you'll see the board that he grew it on, right? And um, we we're many hours feeding. And uh, we ha you can see it actually top right there. This was just a rare scene uh, at catching two hornets mating. This is actually on a, on a concrete floor. Um, and uh, that's a male and a female, the male on the bottom, okay? Um, and impregnating the female. That's the whole purpose. Male hornets do not sting. Um, actually, the male is actually the smaller one on top. The female is the one trying to bite them. This was a huge kind of banana fruit that uh, I came across and noticed hornets were on it. And I got the camera team to come out here. Um, and it's a really cool picture of hornets basically getting the nectar, right? Anything they can do to feed their, their hives um, on that. Um, this is uh, basically kind of a guard position with their, with their arms slightly raised in front looking, right? We call this kind of the bulldog and they would hover at the front and they would basically guard the front of their uh their hive the hives of the hornet are built in the ground this was done in, this is actually blue screen right here we spent hours and hours capturing blue string you know and uh, i was feeding the hornets to the blue screen as the camera person was uh you know um um you know filming and that was quite enjoyable, really hot and uh, really time consuming. Some really great up close pictures. You can see the three eyes at the top of the forehead um, and um, all that. This again is, is the yellow jackets, um, you know, on it. Kind of a, I can't remember where that was. Yeah, so. I was literally, you can see the damage of the hive. It's kind of damaged and stuff. This has been multiple shots of the, uh, of the hornets. And these hornets are pretty, you know, you can see not moving very fast. Um, I was actually feeding hornets to that hive to get that behavior, to create the behavior of the attack. This is me flying the drone um, through the trees. I was also the flo drone fly 
these are, I have a lot of these uh, images uh, that I flew and, um, you know, um, and uh, I spent a lot of time. They wanted to, they wanted to charge like $20,000 for a drone team. I said, you know what, I'll buy the drone and you, you know, charge. Uh, this is actually Osmo. Um, actually, this actually this may have been the. Now, I, now I found this is another Hornet hive that we found. I found my teacher found it and, and uh, showed it to my location. And then I looked at it and thought this would be uh, a great place to hide. Now, this isn't part of the hive. This is a cut scene. What we're doing is hanging cone up upside down and uh, filming. So this cone is actually in a dugout. You can see the damage to the cone there. You see it's slightly, slightly damaged. That's from um, basically um, uh, magic. A real, if it was in the hive, you would have those bunt down. But this is actually alive. But once you, these are just like bees. These these hornets are just taking care. And you can see them scratching and they're hungry. They're like, feed me, feed me. And they make this scratching sound. And you can see the, the hornet are also hungry. So they're looking to get food from them because that's the only way they can eat so uh they'll produce kind of a vesper and then they drink it there's actually a drink in it so the hornets are actually feeding and they're creating the saliva right there's the nutrient saliva right there right that um you know um you know that's uh they're 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 producing and drinking like see they're producing it right there and that's that's fed to as you know as you know as uh for the hornets to come and consume because they can't consume any solids because the thoracic is so thin so they have to be fed by you know by the uh the hornets but all of this is filmed by hives that i've pulled out and i've wired and i've hung up so the camera person can just sit up underneath it right and film um and capture these amazing shots. So this is simply by hanging the hornets, the hives up under, and you can actually see the rasping there, you know, on it. And uh, you know, the camera guy has to be all suited up for this because it's very dangerous. After the the grub gets a certain, it starts to weave the thread, right, and it cocoons itself in. And at that point, then it's going to do the transformation from a larva into an actual hornet. Okay, so there's one kind of weaving it in, weaving itself. So even though it was out and it's no longer in the nest, you know, it is doing its weaving its nest. It was, we caught it just at the right time and creating this little, you know, um, cocoon that it, that is going to do its transformation in on it. Um, people ask, have you ever eaten one of these? I did. I, I, I ate one of these on my, uh, on my first show, Animal Planet. And uh, my first teacher there uh, would, in, he they didn't put him into the show, but basically he would go into the show, into a hornet without any, any suit on. And that was my first experience with these guys. And at that site, that was my first time, the old man pulled one out and ate one, uh, this beautiful shikoku. And they taste very nutty. I tell you what, after eating one of those, I have no problems eating a maggot or anything else. So... So this is a phony location. That's pretending like where they're located. They're not really. This is me moving with a with a with a Osmo, right? I'm moving with an Osmo through through the you know through the wood like I'm a hornet. Now this is something I created. This is all fake. This is a the entrance I created uh, with just rocks laying around. I had to dig out. This is actually footage from um, uh, underneath of it, um, and. Uh, I basically had this all open so we could film the inside and film the building. So the hornets will actually dig out inside the uh, the nest. Um, and you can see the different size. And all of the different colors of this is from different colored bark um, that they're making. And they're, they chew it up off the bark of a tree and they bring it. So here they are. Now they're actually grabbing the nectar from here. This was an interesting location. This was at a... At a that, that shot right there was actually at a riding stable friend of mine. Um, but but uh, this isn't not, I mean, this is actually created entrance of it. Um, and I put moss from up in the mountain to cover the entire front to hide it. 
So this was actually on Tokonaga Suzume's land. It was kind of a, you know, a little bit down right between his land and another. And I kept feeding these with chicken to, you know, to build them up. So over the course of, you know, of the filming, I would bring cute, large chicken breast and they would devour them all right there. And I've got some show, you know, some images of this on my, on my uh, YouTube channel of, um, you know, of, of this, uh, you know, of this hive. But this is all, you know, this is made possible because I dug out the hive and I made it, you know, um, I made it possible to film inside. So this is actually underground on the side of an embankment that we had cut out. And if you, uh, this is a different, this is actually a Kolgata, right? This is actually a different hornet from that last hornet that was right nearby that I set up. Now there's an interesting story with this one, that one there was I was feeding it, I dropped chicken out and it created a swarm and I didn't have really no hood on or anything. Um, and the, the literally, it was literally like uh, just, you know, 20 meters from this hive right here, the hornets leaving, you know, going out, coming out and leaving. It's kind of cool. Little bulldogs. Again, these are, this is actually taken from the Natural Geographic, right? They, uh, this was, they bar they paid for that footage there, but flying, right? They didn't create that. This is me, my, my drone flying in the, you know, flying around, um, at the graveyard here this is drone work of mine and you'll see it cuts off we can see the board there of it um and uh yeah i think these are more these I don't, this is more purchased uh footage for it or it may be that they you know they put together i'm not sure you know on that There's like seven uh, uh, species of hornets in Japan, and um, see if I can remember them all. I can't remember them all because they're a really small one. I can't remember what that one is called, the Kolgata. So this is, um, there's the Kido Suzumabachi, which is this one. There is the, um, um, and there, that there, you see how that one's yellow? This is actually a male. You see that's a male. Those are not, those are male hornets. They're not attacking. Males would never attack, right? You see how how uh, how light their thorax is, right? So uh, they're this big fighting, and this is happening because I've placed this hornet onto the hive, and the yellow jackets are just. And this is what would happen if a hornet came, a hungry hornet would come. Now it would happen. You notice how this one is a darker abdomen, right? On it, see how it's yellow? That's a male. The large one has a yellowish abdomen. That's a yell. Uh, Kido oh, um, another male there um, on it. It's actually as yellow as the yellow jackets. You see that? Um, and they are fighting, you know. That there is actually a female, right? You know, on that. And you can see how vicious they are, you know, in defense of their, of their, of their uh, hive. And, um, you know, on it. But you can see from multiple, multiple shooting, there's a hole in the side and stuff like that. And uh, that's from um, you know, trying to get the sting in right there in between the, trying to get up, you know, it's hard penetrating. So they've got to find that soft spot right up underneath the wing. It's trying to get it right up on the, he's holding the wing and, uh, you know, uh, get that sting in there on them. It's like breathing. On there, a lot of hornets died for the production of this thing. They did. You see the darkness there, the different darkness, the really dark red. Those are those are um, the queens, right? The future queens, a really dark head. The lighter head are the workers. The queens are, have a very very rosy head, like that one there on the left. That'd be a queen. That'd be what's known as a nymph. A next generation queen. This is filmed near the end of there of a hive um, of it, you know. So um, that's kind of a cool picture with them flying in. If you go visit the uh, temple, it's still there in uh, Ono in Shikoku. There's me more kind of 
more of my drone work there. It's so beautiful in Shikoku. It's if I ever have a chance, if I could have gone back and done it all over again, I would have uh, ultimately uh, done, you know, moved to Shikoku and lived there. This is a vim image at the stable, right? And uh, there was a beetle that it just happened to be, you know, walking by, and we thought, let's put the beetle on the tree. Now this is a, a chestnut tree, and it's actually they're 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 cutting into the bark to get the sap of the chestnut tree, and they're actually drinking the sap. You can see down there if he focuses in. Yeah, he's got that little bleed there, the little bit of sap, and then and here's the beetle. We had to. This took like an hour. We kept having to pick it up, and it would go a different way, and this lumbering beetle just climbing up. And uh, I thought, wouldn't it be cool for the beetle to be like, how would they interact with the beetle? Look, he came there, hit there. It's like, get out of here. Like, get out of our food. <laughs> it's, <a hornet. laughs> it's like great. But I tell you, to get this shot done, and you can see the, uh, you know, uh, the size comparison. I, with, with the beetles being so big, the hornet. And then another one comes in, and boom, I got rid of him. That took a lot. That took hours to, you know, to do, to set up and everything else for that. And they go back to drinking. That little scene, um, you know, on it. Here's some Osmo moving around. I should, this could be a drone, actually, you know, on it. Now, this is the, the beehive that I created. Now, I found the tree with the rotted out front, the, you know, this front side. And they wanted to create, you know, we spent hours, I mean, well, d uh, months and days looking for a natural beehive. We couldn't find, no one could find one. So I spent basically three months creating this beehive. Now, this is actually the, the way it looked. And what I did on the back of this is carved it out. Now, how I made this scene here is I just basically grabbed bees and I just put them, the beehive outside in the back and just put, shook bees down, you know, in there. So the bees would come out. Now this is actually shot inside another another location at a beehive. They're not together, um, and they're put together. But these are the the honeybees. These are Kidosusum. Um, these are I'm sorry. This is this is um, Apis serrana, and these are the only bees. They're the Asian honeybee. They're beautiful little girls. They're very you know they're not very aggressive at all, and uh, they'll let you come to their hive and stuff, and they'll bump into your face and stuff. But they're not like the um, you know, the, um, um, like the Italian bees, which are so aggressive here, honeybees. These are very, very cool. And here's a, a bee coming out. These little girls coming out for the first time. They're beautiful. I really love this. If I, uh, I've always said, if, uh, if I ever have a daughter, I'll call her Serana. And, um, you can see the little worker there moving around. So this is a shot from the entrance at looking out, right? So this is the back of it, right? So this whole back is, is a, in, you know, and there's the hornet checking it out, you know, on it. Now the hornet from the other side with the rock is literally straight. If, if you were to go straight back, you can kind of see the little mossy bit, like right where the entrance in the back is actually where the other hive. That's how close they were. I set up three hives very close to you just to make more efficiency for filming so all three hives are um are very close so you can see it right back there like where that lower one was straight back is where that rock one was and um you know and we spent a lot of time just waiting for the hornets because it was so close finally the hornets would smell the honey and come to the location right and um and they would start to investigate going down there right so this was us be placing hornets actually inside a beehive, right? And uh, them attacking and bawling. So this wasn't in that hive. This was actually in a different hive. We put wood in there and stuff like that to create, you can see the wood. This is just pieces of wood that we put in there to create that, you know, on, on there to create that, uh, you know, that, that experience like we're actually inside of the hive, you know. So... This is what would happen, but this is this is behavior that that we provoked, okay, on it. And here's why, you know, we had to shoot this in a month, so for us to sit around and wait for this natural behavior was just impossible. 
this behavior is what would happen, right, uh, in a given situation. However, um, since we didn't have the time, like the BBC and everything else, you can see the bawling on the left, and this is pretty dramatic. And these little girls don't know that it's staged, right? And they are just going after. This is like, you know, the Clash of the Titans on here, um, on that. So, uh, yeah, pretty amazing. These little girls are so furious, so protective of their of their hive, um, you know, to kill them. Little girls, they're so cute. And they are furious. You know, you can imagine a horror film and bees doing that, you know, like recreating that. And, and uh, imagine this bees doing that to uh, to a person, just running around, bawling up a person. That would be quite horrific. Just normal bees, you know, just like all of a sudden Africanized bees. I don't think African eye bees ball up on you. They just keep stinging you. But imagine if bees actually balled up on you and cooked you, right? Um, you know, on it. Like people put the queen on them. You see the little net mesh uh, net they create? They hang. Kind of cool. How they uh, create these little roads and stuff holding on to each other. It's so cool. Uh, you know, this is just, they just do this in order to. Uh, to branch across. I don't know why they do this, but you see that kind of like a webbing of bees, um, you know, for, and there they are dead in there. They killed, they cooked, their body temperature basically cooked the, uh, the hornet. Kind of cool, eh? I mean, these, let's talk about the evolution. You know, these giant hornets um, ultimately are, are developed because they grew up on an island. The island has what's known as radical evolution. Uh, radical evolution happens on islands. Um, we evolved on islands. That's, you know, the whole idea of Atlantis. We are aquatic apes, you know, semi-aquatic apes uh, that were our ancestors with a monk ape, the common ancestor between the monkey and the ape. And we evolved on an island off the coast of Somalia and Ethiopia. That's where um, the origin of man was. And as climate change melted, as waters rose, now this is my theory, okay? You're, you're like, where did you hear this from? Well, this is my theory. Um, we had waves of hominoids uh, come to Africa. And the javelin, which was our super weapon, was ultimately a fishing weapon. And the reason why, if you think about our core fear is, is sharks, snakes, and spiders. There were our three predators. There are ancient three predators or, 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 or that we were completely afraid of. Yeah, this was just a little hornet. We never dug this one up. Again, this is hanging on that. Um, so I have a story of, uh, you know, of the evolution. These giant hornets didn't have any natural predators. We were the only natural predator. Um, and in Japan, the beekeeper has to be a hornet hunter. They have to, you know, control these because there is no natural enemy except for, you know, if they, if, a, you know, if a, a raccoon or something finds a hive early on, right, and can dig it up and get at it early spring. Um, but once a hive gets built, there's really nothing that will, you know, um, you get them. Here's some great shots of a emerging hornet. Again, this is hanging upside down and uh, they're breaking out of it a lot of these these are they're breaking out these are the last ones so these are all nymphs a nymph is basically uh, uh, a, a hornet that hasn't been um, you know uh, hasn't made it it's called a nymph there's a the future queens on it so even though that looks kind of small it doesn't have the red head so this is probably a worker again if they have the bright red head that is those are the queens the future queens you see, this is kind of yellow head. Um, and if they have a yellow thorax, this actually is a male. You know, I just can see the thorax. You see how it's very yellow? So these are males coming out at the end of the season. And the males, the whole purpose of the males is to get into another hive. They literally have to, you know, um, try to get in to a hive or, uh, you know, catch it. But they're that aggressive 
that they literally are flying out in front of a hive. They'll smell the the new, you know, the 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 um, the nymphs and want to get in there, and they'll try to get by or wait outside the hive for the for the for the princess to emerge, and uh, and and mate with her. And then what happens is the um, the new queen will go and find a space to hibernate for the winter, and she'll merge in the spring, really really thirsty, and uh, you know um, get uh, help. You can see kind of these really um, that one hornet was kind of dusty, probably because it fell on the ground. <laughs> Not very active there on there. This is me flying a drone. Or actually, this could be the Osmo moving up. Yeah, I think this is my drone flying. Yeah, on there. So the yellow, this is the yellow jacket on there. Um, my teacher grew these, and then I moved them. Moving them, I had to put a box around them. I had to drive them uh, about a 30-minute a drive in the car with me, right? Imagine that huge hut and um here are the hornets coming in for the attack you know on it this is just a mock-up like i said all we did was these hornets were tired you know like sneaking up they were just we're just placed i just placed them they're just walking so i was placing the hornets um and uh you know and then getting to see that's a male there you see the the male would never be on here with this yellow thorax on it it's looking around um, it's a young, see a lot of, if they're young, they won't fly away. So it's, it's hornets that just come out of their hive, you know, on there and they're flying away. That's a mock-up scene. So there they're fighting. See there's the right, that's a theme. That's a nymph there. So you see the long thorax, that's, you know, on there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little explanation of, of, uh, the Smithsonian killer hornets from hell. Uh, I orchestrated all of this. If you ever want to, uh, you know, film anything, my name is Mike Trout or Found Ups, Michael J. Trout, is my YouTube channel. And uh, you can uh, contact me. And uh, uh, it's kind of fun. Uh, I can tell you, none of uh, the crew were stung. I kept them safe. And I handled all, every, from the, from the transportation to the lodgings. I took everything. So I have a team in Japan that I have that can help. Um, and I appreciate you watching. Hornethunter.com is my website. You take care now.